Hi, welcome to Candela. I'm Kavita. In this lecture, we shall discuss an interesting chapter in physical anthropology that is chromosomal aberrations. Before we discuss what are the aberrations, what are the different kinds of aberrations, let's get to know a few important details about chromosomes. What is a chromosome? Chromosomes are thread-like structures which are present in the nucleus. They carry the genetic material DNA and they become clearly visible during cell division. The word chromosome was coined by Waldeyer in 1988. It is derived from the Greek word which can be split into chroma and soma. Chroma means color and soma means body. We have two different kinds of cells in our body that is somatic cells and gametic cells. Somatic cells means body cells. They are deployed in nature that is 2N. What do you mean by deployed? Deployed means they have two set of chromosomes that is deployed means they have two set of chromosomes that is one set of chromosome comes from the father and the other set of chromosome comes from the mother whereas the gametes or the sex cells what are the sex cells in the human beings it is the ovum in females or women and it is the sperm in males or men so the gamete cells or the sex cells are haploid in nature that is n they have a single set of chromosome present within them so in all we have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes in the case of men in the case of men it is 44 autosomes autosomes means body chromosomes so they have 44 autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes that is one chromosome will be x and the other chromosome will be y whereas in case of females or women they will have 44 autosomes and one pair of allosomes which is x and x here we need to understand that body chromosomes means autosomes sex chromosomes means allosomes so in case of men we have 44 body chromosomes or autosomes and one pair of sex chromosome that is 1x and 1y whereas in case of females or women we have 44 body chromosomes and 2x chromosomes now we shall now we shall try to understand the structure of the chromosome how does the chromosome look like this is the typical structure of a chromosome there are two arms that is the p arm and the q arm which are held together by the centromere this yellow color structure the button like structure here is called as the centromere and the upper arm is called as the p arm and the lower arm is called as the q arm based on the position of the centromere we can classify chromosomes into different kinds that is metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric now we shall see what are the different chromosomes based on the posi position of the centromere this is the metacentric chromosome here the centromere is placed in the middle such that it divides the p arm and the q arm so that the p arm and the q arm are almost of equal length this kind of chromosome which has equal p arm and q arm is called as metacentric chromosome then we have the submetacentric chromosome here the centromere is placed slightly away from the center or the middle portion so that the p arm becomes short and the q arm is lengthy so the p arm is short and the q arm is longer than the p arm such a chromosome is called as submetacentric chromosome next we have the acrocentric chromosome here the centromere is placed further far further away from the center much away from the center such that the p arm becomes very short and the q arm becomes very long such a centromere such chromosome is called as acrocentric chromosome next we have the telocentric chromosome 
where the centromere is placed towards one end such that we do not have any p arm at all we have only the long q arms such a chromosome is called as telocentric chromosome now we understood what are the classification of chromosomes based on the position of the centromere so we have the metacentric chromosome where the centromere is placed in the center such that the p arm and the q arm are equal to each other and then we have the submetacentric chromosome where the p arm is short and the q arm is long then we have the acrocentric chromosome where the p arm is very short and the q arm is very long then further we have the telocentric chromosome where the centromere is placed towards one end of the chromosome such that we do not have the p arm and we have only very long q arms now we shall discuss what is the meaning of chromosomal aberration a chromosomal aberration is when the structure of the chromosome or the number of chromosomes is abnormal this may happen due to various factors so what is the meaning of an aberration either when the normal structure of the chromosome or the number of chromosome becomes abnormal or it gets changed due to various reasons then we call it as a chromosome when there is an abnormality in the chromosome either due to addition or deletion of the number, number of chromosomes or due to change in the structure of the chromosome then we call it as a chromosomal aberration under chromosomal aberration we have various types we have numerical aberrations we have structural aberrations we have body chromosomal aberrations and we have sex chromosomal aberration first one is numerical aberration what do we mean by numerical aberration when there is an addition or deletion in the number of chromosomes then we call it as numerical aberration earlier i told you that we have 46 chromosomes so when instead of 46 if we have 45 chromosomes because of deletion of a chromosome or if we have 40 seven chromosomes because of addition of a chromosome so like that it no, need not be only a single chromosome any number of chromosomes addition or deletion causes abnormality in the number of chromosomes that is instead of 46 if we have a lesser number or a higher number then it is called as a numerical aberration structural aberration when there is a change in the structure of the chromosome either due to deletion or duplication or translocation or inversion or insertion of a portion of a chromosome then it is called as a structural aberration say for example the cryodocat syndrome already we have discussed the structure of the chromosome this is the normal structure of a chromosome whereas in a cryodocat syndrome a part of the chromosome on the p arm is missing at the fifth position hence it is called as 5p minus this syndrome is called as cryodocat syndrome so these kind of anomalies where there is either a deletion or addition or insertion or inversion of a portion of the chromosome then we call it as structural aberration similarly we have body chromosomal aberrations we already discussed what is body chromosomes that is the 20 two pairs of chromosomes or the 44 chromosomes which we called it as autosomes are called as body chromosomes if there is a change in those chromosomes then we call it as body chromosomal aberrations then again we discussed sex chromosomes that is in males it is x and y whereas in females it is x and x if there is a change in those chromosomes then we call it as a sex chromosomal aberration how do we diagnose chromosomal aberration the preliminary medical examination may reveal the symptoms of the chromosomal aberration. However, the symptoms alone are not sufficient to confirm that a person is suffering from a particular chromosomal aberration. Further karyotyping tests need to be done to confirm the aberration. So what is karyotyping? Karyotyping is a test to study the size, shape, structure and number of the chromosomes in a systematic manner. See this is the normal human karyotype. Here the chromosomes are arranged from 1 to 22 in a systematic order and this is the karyotype of a male. Here you can see the presence of 1x chromosome and 1y chromosome. This is the typical 
karyotype of a female. Here you can see again 22 pairs of chromosomes along with 2 X chromosomes. So, in a person having a chromosomal aberration either there will be a change in the structure of the chromosome or the number of chromosome. Say for example, in the case of down syndrome there will be 3 chromosomes over here in the place of 2 that is in this 21st place instead of 2 chromosomes we will have 3 chromosomes. So, these are the various kinds of chromosomal aberrations. Sex chromosomal aberration. Here we have super male, super female, Klinefelter and Turner syndrome. All these are numerical aberrations occurring in the sex chromosomes. Here in super male there is the presence of an additional Y chromosome in addition to the X and Y. This occurs only in males. Super female this condition occurs only in females. In addition to the normal X 2 X chromosomes there is an addition X chromosome over here. So, there are 3 X chromosomes totally. Then Klinefelter syndrome this syndrome occurs only in males. Here in addition to 1 X and 1 Y chromosome this male has one more X chromosome. Turner syndrome this condition occurs only in girls. Here there is one X chromosome only another X chromosome is missing. Okay. So, this condition is called X0 that is there is only one X chromosome and another X chromosome is missing. This condition occurs only in girls. This syndrome is called as Turner syndrome. So, now let us So, now let us discuss a few body chromosomal aberrations. Here we have the examples of Down syndrome. Down syndrome is the trisomy of the 21st chromosome. So, what happens in Down syndrome is here in the 21st position in this 21st position instead of 2 chromosome there will be another additional chromosome. This is called as Down syndrome. Next one is Edwards syndrome. Here it is the trisomy of the 18th chromosome. This is trisomy of the 18th chromosome. Down syndrome is trisomy of the 21st chromosome. So, what happens in Edwards syndrome is here this is the karyotype of the Edwards syndrome. Here in the 18th place in addition to 2, X, uh, two chromosomes there will be one more extra chromosome. This is called trisomy of the 18th chromosome. This condition is called Edwards syndrome. Then Patau syndrome. Patau syndrome this is trisomy of the 13th chromosome. So, what happens in Patau syndrome is here in the 13th place in the 13th place in addition to these two chromosomes there will be another additional chromosome. This condition is called Patau syndrome and then Cryducat syndrome. In Cryducat syndrome we will have one part of the P arm that is missing. We have already discussed Cryducat syndrome in the previous slides. Now, we shall discuss one sex chromosomal aberration and one body chromosomal aberration in detail. The first sex chromosomal aberration which we shall discuss is Turner syndrome. This is also called as monosomy X. This is a condition which occurs only in girls. Here there is absence of one X chromosome. In a normal female we have 22 pairs of autosomes and X and X we have 2 X chromosome in normal females. Whereas, in the girls suffering from Turner syndrome there will be only one X chromosome and another X chromosome is missing. This condition is called Turner syndrome. Here due to the absence of one X chromosome the girl fails to show sexual maturity. She does not attain puberty at the right age. Because of this there is low levels of uh, estrogen and the IQ is also less. The girl looks short in stature and we have few more characters like a shark like face. We have few more characters that is the girl is very short in stature and she has a lower IQ and she has a shark like face you can see this a shark like face and low posterior hairline, a web neck, cubitus valgus and clinodactyly. I will tell you what all these terms mean. 
here you can see the shark like face it has a very pointed structure this is called as a shark like face this is the web neck and this is the posterior hairline that is the hairline is very low that is called as posterior hairline cubitus valgus cubitus valgus means unusual carrying angle you can see this here their arm will not be straight it will be at an angle like this this is called as cubitus valgus then we have clinodactyly clinodactyly means incurving of the third and fourth fingers that is the third and fourth finger of the hands will be incurved like this this is called as clinodactyly diagnosis how do we diagnose a patient with turner syndrome so first clinical examination and then it is followed by karyotyping and what are the treatment options that is available hormone substitution therapy can be given so that the girl develops secondary sexual characters however infertility cannot be resolved infertility still persists the next syndrome which we shall discuss is a body chromosomal aberration that is down syndrome down syndrome is also called as trisomy of the 21st chromosome here you can see in this karyotype in the 21st place instead of two chromosomes there is an additional chromosome hence this is called as the trisomy of the 21st chromosome down syndrome is most common in boys in comparison to girls so what are the symptoms and what are the characters of down syndrome so down syndrome children have a low iq they have a flat occipital region this is the occipital region so here they will have a flat head so they have a flat occipital region they have a low iq they have oblique set eye with full epicantic fold it is also called as mongoloid eye this is a mongoloid eye that is the eyes are oblique and you can see this epicanthic fold over here that is the upper eyelid is protruding it is bulging this is called as epicanthic fold it is also called as mongoloid eye and the eyes are also tilted or it is slanted this is also called as oblique set eyes then they also have the nasal bridge which is very low and depressed here you can see the low and depressed nasal bridge that is it will be very low over here next we have the protruding fissured tongue and narrow palate the tongue will be very thick and it will be protruding they will also have fissures fissures means minor cuts in the tongue and they have a narrow palate palate means the upper roof of the mouth that will be very narrow then they have web neck deformity also so all this i will show you pictures so here you can see the depressed nasal bridge the mongoloid eyes epicanthic fold and you can see the tongue which is very thick and uh, here this is the epicanthic fold and then here you can see the web neck deformity okay so these are the various characteristics of a person suffering from down syndrome so what are the diagnosis methods diagnosis is again through clinical examination followed by karyotyping and uh, because these children have very low iq they need to be under sustained care of their parents and family so the treatment is mostly in the form of counseling for the family members thank you